All right, now we're going to make use of our parametric equations that we came up with the other day. So remember, parametric equations look at the direction horizontally and direction vertically, right? And they have that parameter of t. And the position in our story problems that we're going to deal with, that t is dependent on time, right? So we have a function with x that's made up of t's and a function with y that's made up of t's. And I can actually end up putting these together as well in certain situations. And we're going to look at that here as, as we go. So first of all, why would we want to use a parameter? Well, sometimes there's a curve when traced over time that doubles back or crosses itself. And that would technically be a function where we wouldn't be able to write it as, you know, one nice equation, one nice function. You know, for example, if I had a graph that looked like, you know, something like this. And it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. And so I wouldn't be able to write, write a nice uh, parabola for that or anything. Um, so that's where we need parameters. So for example, right here, this would be a guy where I would need parameters. And if I look at this, let's look at the graph of this guy. And let's put arrows on it to show the direction of t. That's always kind of helpful. So I got the table created here. So let's go ahead. Remember, we just graph our points. So like 5, negative 1.5. That's when t is negative 3. And first, a quick review. Remember, all that happens is we plug in the t up here. So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. That's how I get my x. And then I plug in the t of negative 2 right here. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And that's where I get that negative 1 right there. So 0, negative 1 is the point that I graph. And then we keep going. Negative 3, negative 0.5. Negative 4, 0. Negative 3, 0.5. Now let's come back here. 0, 1. And 5, 1.5. Okay, so if I look at this graph, it's coming like this and doubling back this way. And if I put arrows on it, it's going just like this as we get further and further along into the, the positive t direction. So that would technically not be a function. So I wouldn't be able to write it just as one function like I will be to some of these that we look at today. But what we would like to do is write one equation that relates the vertical distance y to the horizontal distance x. And we basically eliminate the parameter to make the equation look familiar. And we always write, write y as a function of x, right? It's like y equals something with an x in it. So that's our goal. So what we do is we solve one of the parameters for t. And then we substitute that into the other equation. And we usually like to get y in terms of x, meaning you know y is by itself, like y equals something. So how that looks is like this. We'll grab our horizontal parameter, and we'll rewrite it being solved for t. So I'm going to subtract the 3 over right away. So x minus 3 equals 2t and divide by 2. So t is equal to x minus 3 over 2. And then what happens is we plug that we substitute that in into the vertical equation. So we'd say y equals, so in for t we're going to put x minus 3 over 2 squared. So now I have one equation to represent those two parameters, the horizontal and the vertical parameters. Okay, And as long as it ends up being a function, that would work out. Let's try it again. All right, so I want to solve this bad boy for t. Remember, grab the horizontal, solve it for t. So I could either take the third root or take it to the one-third power. I'm just going to take it to the one-third power. So I got t equals x to the one-third power. And that is going to get substituted in to t of the other equation. So it'll be y equals x to the one-third minus one. Or I guess it could be y equals the third root of x minus one as well. Either one of those would be just fine. And lastly, solving this top one for t, so I'm going to subtract one right away. So I got x, so x minus one equals t over two. And then we multiply by two on both sides. So I got two x minus two equals t. And we're going to plug that guy in for t. Right up here. I think we're getting the picture here now. So I have 2x minus 2 squared minus 2. And, you know, technically I should distribute this all out. So I'd really have 4x squared. And we'd have negative 8x plus 
4 minus 2, so I'd get plus 2 right there. So really either or. I could say this would be just fine, or I could simplify or expand it out into its general quadratic form there. Okay. All right, let's just read through this and break this down. So it says, consider throwing an object off a building. The equation y equals at squared plus b sub o t plus h sub o only talks about the height of the object. What if we also throw it sideways? Okay, what do we mean by sideways? We don't mean that we're like directly throwing it sideways. We're throwing it up in the air, but it's making a projectile, you know, that part of our parabola and coming down, it's going to, you know, come all the way down and hit the ground somewhere down here. Okay, but my projectile motion equation, you know, instead of having an x, we have t because t, the x really represents t all the, all the time. t all the time, that was kind of funny. Um, but our t here is going to represent time for our vertical parameter. Okay, and if we remember, this A represents our gravity. This is our initial velocity. And before, I think we used like S sub O, but I, H sub O looks nicer. Okay, I don't know why the book uses S sub O earlier. Uh, but H sub O is nice because initial height. All right, so if that only describes like the height and we want to know where it would land, like how far away from the building, we need a horizontal parameter as well. Okay, so that's where this comes into play. So now if we get some information, okay, we're 30 meters up, and it's thrown upwards at a velocity of 20 meters per second, and horizontally outwards at 5 meters per second. Where will it land? This is where we need two parameters, a horizontal parameter and a vertical parameter. Okay, so this vertical parameter is going to deal with our projectile motion. Right, that's the one we just looked at right here. So I might put that in. So we got a t squared plus v sub o t plus initial height h sub o. Okay, what am I going to do to represent my horizontal parameter? Well, it's moving horizontally five meters each second. So in zero seconds, so in zero seconds, it's at zero meters. In one second, it's at five meters. In two seconds, it's at 10 meters. So really, it just is taking the meters, or the, it's really taking that velocity at five meters per second times the time. So it's just five times t. That'll represent my horizontal distance. Okay, well, let's fill out the information for my vertical distance that we know. So A is our gravity. Remember, for A, if it's meters, we use negative 4.9, and if it is feet, we use negative 16. And we're going to look at that further once we get to our section on projectile motion. But for now, I'll tell you what to use. So this time, we're going to use negative 4.9 for A, and T squared plus the initial velocity vertically, which is what? Right here, 20 meters per second upward, so 20T, plus an initial height of 30 meters. All right, so now how do we do this? It says, where will it land? Well, what do I know about its projectile motion here? If I keep going with this guy and it's coming all the way down here, it's going to land right here. You know, that's a ground level of zero. Where would I plug that zero into? Which equation? Well, that's the height, right? The height is zero. So that zero for the height would be the y value. So that needs to go in for this equation right here. 0 equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 20t plus 30. So then I could find the t, which would be the time it took for that apple to land on the ground after we threw it. So what do I need to do? Well, it's a quadratic equal to 0. So I could use the quadratic formula. I could use my calculator, which I'm going to do. So one way to do this is to be in my function mode and just graph my projectile motion with, instead of t, use my x's, because my x is going to represent time. And then I want to find when the y is 0. So remember to do that. That's my root right here. So i got to hit second calc and find a 0. And i got to go left of that root. So an x unit left of that root. So a little bit you know, less than 5.2, so right there. And now we got to go right bound, right of that root. Take a guess. And there we go. So the time is at 5.25 seconds, about. But that's not what I want to know. I want to know 
where will it land? So what do I need to do with that 5.25? Yep, that's got to get plugged into my horizontal parameter up here because it's going to tell me how far away from that building it lands. So I'm going to take 5 times 5.25, and we get 26.25 meters. There we go. I'll try a few more examples here. So a hot air balloon is rising at the rate of 11 feet per second. A wind is blowing west to east at 24 feet per second. If the power lines are 95 feet high and 300 feet from where the hot air balloon is launched, will the hot air balloon clear the wires? So do I need pair or, uh, projectile motion in this case? Is there any gravity being pushed down and making this hot air balloon start to come back to the ground? Not yet, you know, because this thing is rising at a rate of... 11 feet per second. So there is no projectile motion. So let's imagine the line of this thing. So right now this hot air balloon is, you know, horizontally 300 feet away. And this power line vertically is 95 feet. And the hot air balloon, it's going to be on a straight line because every time it goes up 11 feet, it's going to go east 24 feet, right? Because each second it goes up 11. So it's really a slope. So it's going to be coming like this. And we're checking to see if it's going to clear those lines or not. All right. So let's write our two parametric equations here. So how about for my horizontal? Well, it looks like it's going west to east. That's horizontal. So 24 feet per second. So 24 times t. So every second it goes 24 feet. What about for my y? What do I need for this? We just said we don't need projectile because gravity is not affecting this here. Well, I mean, obviously, the hot air balloon is going against gravity, but there is no effect of that gravity on this right now. And all it's doing is every second it's going 11 feet. So 11 T. That's all I really need. And what are we looking for? Basically, we want to see if our balloon can get to 95 feet high prior to it reaching 300 feet. So let's try it. So we want to put in 95 for y, because that's the vertical height. So 95 equals 11t. So we want to solve for t in this case. So 95 divided by 11. So at 8.63, 8.63, 63, it's going to reach 95 feet. Does that happen? prior to or after 300 feet. How would I find that out? Well, yeah, now I got to take that and plug that in for time in my horizontal parameter. So let's do that. X equals 24 times 8.6363, 207.3 feet. So at about, you know, here, it's already at 207 feet. It's already reached as high as the power line. So will it clear it? Yeah. So this thing is more so like here, and it's going to clear that power line nice and easy. So it'll work. All right. So yes, I would say it will clear the wires. Could I make this into one equation? Could I combine those two? Yeah. I could solve that horizontal 4t. You know, for example, right down here, I could go divide by 24, divide by 24, and t would equal x over 24. And now I could plug that in for t of the vertical and say y equals 11 times x over 24, which technically is the same thing as what? y equals 11 24ths x, which that was our slope, right? Up 11, right 24. So I could really use that and just simply plug in 95 for y and see if I get something that's less than 300 for x, which I would have got the exact same thing, 207.3. All right, now let's make you think a little bit more. So we got a ball with a velocity of 2.3 meters per second, and it's rolled off the edge of a table that is 1.75 meters high. When and where will it hit the ground? Okay, so let's put this ball. This ball is what? 1.75 meters high. All right, it's got a speed of 2.3 meters per second. So let's think about our two parameters. So we got our horizontal. So it goes 2.3 meters every second. So 2.3 times t. Okay, not too bad. Y, 
Is gravity affecting the ball here? Yes, it is, right? As the ball rolls off the table, gravity is pushing it down. So guess what? We're going to use projectile motion. So that's our AT squared plus B sub O, T plus H sub O. So let's put our information. We're in meters, right? So that means negative 4.9 T squared. Well, what's the initial velocity? Is it 2.3? No, that's the horizontal. Remember, this is going to be the initial vertical velocity. Well, is it going upwards at all? No, it's just going straight off the table. There is no vertical velocity. So zero. So zero times t. Which do I even need to write that? No, zero times t is just zero. And the initial height is 1.75. So it's just like that guy. And then it says when and where will it hit the ground? Well, what do I know? It's going to hit the ground when its vertical height is zero. So when y is zero here, so we need to plug in zero for y. So let's bring that up here. So zero equals negative 4.9 t squared plus 1.75. Yeah, so I could use the quadratic formula. I could graph it in my function mode and find that root, that zero. Or in this case, remember when there's no t value, you could just simply solve. So I could just subtract my 1.75 minus 1.75 and then divide by negative 4.9 and then we'll end up taking the square root it looks like here so t squared equals 0 0.357 approximately you know I'm going to use the whole number on my calculator and I'm just going to square root immediately so I'll square up my answer. So t really equals, I mean, essentially it equals plus or minus uh, 0 0.5976. And do I really need the negative? No, because t is representing time in this case. So really I can just say t equals positive point, you know, rounding it's about 0 0.6, about 0 0.6 seconds. So that would be when it hits the ground, right? So that's one of my answers. It's about 0.6 seconds. And then if I wanted where, I would plug that into my horizontal parameters. So let's bring that guy over here. So x equals 2.3 times, I'm going to use my whole guy here, 5, 9, 7, 6. Try to be as exact as I can. And 2.3 times that gives me 1.37 approximately. And we're in what, meters? So there we go. It took 0.6 seconds for that ball to hit at 1.37 meters. Good. So you just kind of have to think through, do I need projectile motion for my vertical? Yeah, I do. Is there an actual vertical velocity? No, there wasn't. Okay, so some of those things.